All right. Oh my God. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to see everyone. Sheen and Binya. Oh, it's so good. <clears throat> all the beautiful faces that I know, Mariani, and all the amazing people. Despina and Kylie, welcome. Joanna, Anna, Laura, and everyone else. Okay, I'm happy that everyone's on board. Let me share my screen. I'm super stoked. Welcome to this awesome webinar. I'm here because I want to share some awesome information with you. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes? Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Uh oh, again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome to your complimentary webinar. Someday, someday <laughs> this is our Lucid Flow online intro. So if you've ever done my online programs, this is what you'll get. It's super beautiful. And I'm stoked. So today, we're going to talk about amazing things to be successful, to be an outstanding yoga teacher to create the income that you want, and at the same time, do what you love. And not just that, <clears throat> like have a proper order of things or of what you need to do to actually stand out from a crowd and to thrive doing what you love. So <clears throat> to start with, I'd love to start with a prayer. This is a teacher student mantra. And every time in the Vedic traditions, when we start something, we start with praying and then we finish with praying. So that being said, accommodate your space and bring your spine upright. And take a breath, bring the breath to the lower belly and ground. Just take one full deep diaphragmatic breath. Bring the breath all the way to the lower diaphragm, to the pelvic floor. Soften through your shoulders, soften through your face. Blossom your heart forward. So the belly is soft, the heart is warm and open, and then the eyes become soft and kind. So even if you're closing your eyes, just Express kindness out of your eyes. And from this beautiful space, just recognize yourself as an interconnected being that is not separate from anything else, that is not separate from anyone else, that is completely intrinsically connected to this beautiful earth, to all living hearts and heartbeats and living sentient beings. So as you breathe, feel yourself that you are one with this massive network of life. piercing through the myth of separateness and understanding we are all one and the same. And from this space, bring your palms into prayer. And this is a teacher student mantra <clears throat> to protect us both is I now I'm going to share something, but as I share, I also learn from your feedback and from your receiving you and so we learn from each other. May we both be protected and nourished 
May we feel empowered to work together in a sacred symbiosis. And may these studies be brilliant, not just in our minds, but in our hearts and in our feelings. May we always find harmony within each other. And then when you say Om Shanti 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 Hi, there's peace for your inner heart and then peace for everyone around you and peace for the whole universe. Om Sahana Vavatu. And if you want, you can repeat after me. Om Sahana Vavatu. So I'll say the phrase twice. Sahana Bhunaktu. Sahana Bhunaktu. Sahaviryang. Sahaviryang. Karavavahai, Karavavahai, Tejasvina, Tejasvina, Vadhi Tamastu, Vadhi Tamastu, Mavitvishavahai, Ma Vitvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 And then we salute all the teachers and the teachers before our teachers. Harihi Om Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Harihi Om Bring the palms up to the third eye and up to the heavens. Bowing to your heart and bowing down to the earth. <clears throat> All right. Thank you for this beautiful prayer. So Welcome in. If your uh, microphone is not muted, go ahead and mute your microphone. <clears throat> Yoga teachers, how to stand out and create a sustainable income. So now that we prayed, now that we can offer everything and any message that come through, now let's receive some of the information that I've gathered through my experience in this next 24, 20, sorry, 45 minutes, <laughs> I'm going to show you how to stand out as a yoga teacher. And at the end, we'll have a question and answer space. So please, if you have like some notes and uh, a pen, write down your questions so that at the end, I can obviously uh, be there and address them. And also you can start writing mm -hmm. in the chat. Um, I'll share with you how to afford this beautiful lifestyle, how to create sustainable living and doing what you love, of course. And we're going to start to plan, you know, from your home, from your comfort, how and what are the things that you can do to really bring your career into life and, and to trust yourself that you've got this. Uh, and I'm just give you, going to give you like a couple of things and tips and steps. And then from there, you can whoosh, launch and go forth. So, <clears throat> and also I'm happy to share this presentation at the end so you don't have to like write everything down and you know, I can just share it. And I also have special gifts that I'll give you if you stay until the end. All right. 
So you'll see here a photo of me in 2011 in the Global Mala, Mexico, and then in Barcelona Yoga Conference last year. So basically, I've been having lots of exposure, lots of success, lots of, you know, amazing classes, but it hasn't been because I just lift a rock and it happens. It's really, it really takes presence and dedication and it really takes, you know, doing what you love. And I'm going to go to this, but anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to share I've been in the yoga and the healing arts for the past 24 years. And so these are just little nuggets that I'm happy to share. A little bit about me. I was born in Mexico from a family of healers. My mother is a healer. My father is a musician. So I started off with medicine and Chinese medicine and alternative medicine. And I was a gymnast also. So I was already moving my body a lot. And I was mastering everything that had to do with body, mind, and soul. <clears throat> then obviously yoga found me when I left gymnastics because it was so intense and I, I started climbing and I started doing like Tai Chi and Kung Fu and all these epic other things. And then I wanted to climb better and I wanted to do Kung Fu better. So I said, huh, maybe I, oh, and I broke up with a boyfriend. So I was really angry and emotional. And my sister said, hey, come over, let's go do some yoga. It's going to help you when you climb. And so I was like, done, sold. And I went to my first yoga class and I was fully blown. I couldn't understand how one art, one science, one practice could unify not just my physical body, but my emotions and my spirit. And that's what got me into absolutely devoting my life to yoga because I didn't find anything quite like it. Even, you know, in the healing arts, I was still missing um, the physical aspect of it, you know, and, and in the acro yoga scene, I was missing the spiritual aspect of it. So in all aspects of my life, I didn't have one practice that would unify it all. And then I found yoga and I was like, Bam, <laughs> this is it. So I um, I certified myself in lots and lots and lots of trainings. And I still do because I love learning. And that's what we should do every day is keep learning. And um, I did all of the osteopathy and bioenergetics, natural acupuncture, medical magnet therapy, traditional Chinese medicine, Thai yoga massage. And yeah. Right now I'm in Bali, so everyone, I know that some of you have come here to my classes or my trainings, and I'm so happy to see your faces. I somehow can't see all your faces, so I'm going to change this because I want to see everyone here. There we go. Now I can see a little bit more, and I can admit people as well. Okay, let's keep going. Here's me nine years ago when I built my yoga studio in Monterrey, Mexico. Hello, this is me and my little business partner, um, Paulina Cruz. She's amazing. She's here in Bali at the moment. And I started from scratch. I built this when I was already like 10 years into yoga and I was burning myself out. I was teaching every class, every hour, every minute, and it was so intense before that right and when I built my studio I was like okay I need to change something this doesn't work for me like need to figure something out so that I don't have to burn out um and then I started registering my first yoga teacher training do, 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 do. that was already when I had 10 years of experience so basically I had to learn the hard way I had to learn the long way it was like nothing, 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 nothing. Ten years later, I started my first yoga teacher training. Oh, my God. I could have done many other things before that, but that was my pathway. And so here you'll see like one of the first trainings. And then you'll see my Soha trainings here in Bali. Anyway, I'll teach you a little shortcut. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to share with you the six keystones to be outstanding. Um 
And I'm going to say something very key here. The more people you serve, the more you feel good about yourself and the more you will earn. So dharma is everything. Your dharma is always going to have to do with um, serving and loving. It all comes down to these two words, to serve and to love. And that's what it's all about. Really in life, if you're serving, then you're doing what you should be doing. And if you're loving, then you're hitting a jackpot. We need to connect to love at all times, not just uh, like relationship status and all of these things, but like loving what you do every second of every moment of your experience. It's not about, oh, I want to manifest this dream life and I'm going to have this big, big dream. Yeah, okay, you're going to have that vision, but you also have to manifest it every day. Like every day needs to feel that you're having an awesome day because you love what you're doing in your life and because you, you love how you're doing it and you're creating a space where when you're doing it, you're not killing yourself to get to an objective. It's not about the objective. It's about how you get there. It's like tasting the strawberry, smelling the flower, connecting with people. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the big goals. It's about this moment to moment existence. So number one, <clears throat> purpose leads to passion. Passion leads to purpose. Your purpose, something that I really always um, tell my students or my colleagues, something beautiful that they have here in Bali is called Trihita Karana. And this is saying that every human, to be a successful human being, you have to have harmony. You have to seek or understand or breathe harmony with three things. Number one, with the earth. Number two, with people around you. And number three, with God, aligning your values. So if these three are in order, you've got it. If you, whatever you're doing, if, if you're a life coach, if you're a yoga teacher, if, you know, in any branches, if these three are in line, then the universe will support every step of your path because you are connected, because you are where you're supposed to be. When you take care of people, when you take care of the earth, and when you take care of the connection of divinity, understanding that we are divine beings, the whole universe is going to have your back. So <laughs> understand that. You take one step towards God, and God would, will take 100 steps towards you. You need to understand that this is how it works because we are living, breathing magnets. We are, we have frequency. We have water within us and the water, the molecules of your being that you radiate and the light that you share is going to mirror the connection of within that you have within these three realms. So that's my first thing to say. You'll see me here in Soha Seeds, making a heart with the mud in my hands and my friends. And then the connection of unity with people, serving people around you. And then you'll see my little Teo doing a little puja there in a little altar in one of my trainings. So first of all, whatever you do, connected with having harmony with earth, people, and God. If one of these is not in tune, then rebuild it. Number two, specialize. Okay. Now, I have many things to say about this because, first of all, they say, you know, don't specialize. They'll tell you, try to suck, like something, a phrase that I really love is saying, it's good to suck at some things sometimes. You need to learn to suck, you know, because you're learning something different. You're learning something new. You are 
you have no idea how to do Thai yoga massage. You, you have no idea how to do Chinese medicine. You have no idea how to be, you know, a chef, whatever. The first time you try, you're going to suck. And you have to be comfortable with sucking. Like, I moved to Uluwatu and I started surfing and I sucked for a long time, right? <laughs> and I still kind of suck, <laughs> but I love it, right? And I understood that, you know, surfing was helping my cardiovascular system and it was helping me to sleep. So I was like, well, I'm happy to suck and keep doing this, you know? So suck at something sometimes. And however, specialize. Why do we want to specialize? Because let's say I'm Daniela Mandada. I grew from a family of healers, teachers, and musicians. These are things that I have in my intrinsic skill pocket gift that is in my blood. Like I hear music, my flower blossoms. I, 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 I connect to healing arts, any healing art, my heart blossoms. So these are things that I come intrinsically with. But then other things I didn't know. I started learning like the Vedic teachings. I met my teacher Swamiji 15 years ago, you know, and and these things give you experiences that nothing else will give you. When you specialize when you have something that is uniquely yours, you are going to fuse, fusion, connect all of the things that you're good at and create something from it. It's like building a cake. I've got flour, I've got eggs, I've got butter, and then you bring it all together and I've got chocolate and sprinkles. And my cake is gonna be different from your cake. And they're all Maybe sometimes delicious, maybe not so delicious, but if it's not delicious, you will keep improving it. You taste it and you say, hmm, I'm missing a little bit of this. I'm missing a little bit of that. I've been doing trainings for 10 years. The first trainings, oh my God, it was so intense that by week three of 200 hour yoga teacher training, nobody would be receiving the information anymore because it was too much, too fast, too intense. So mm, this cake was a little bit bitter. I need to make it better. And you learn from experience how to accommodate a balance in the way that you offer what you're specialized in. So you need to specialize also in things that are balancing each other because if you're specialized in power yoga with crossfit with running at 12 p.m and sauna practices and like you're gonna kill yourself like i've seen teachers that do hot yoga hot pilates and crossfit and then they're skinny to the bone and i see that it's not balancing for them and so you learn from experience that what you love needs to create an internal balance for your optimal health. The way that you take care of yourself is essential because people see, people do. When your life is vibrating with your health and vitality, People will feel this. And so when you specialize, you're going to pick things that help you feel in balance with yourself, in balance. So what do I do, for example? I've got Soha Elements. I've got my 200-hour teacher training, which I learned was too intense. So I cut it shorter. I gave them homework. I brought some stuff online. You know, you, you kind of do things... Me teaching 24 days was too much. So I needed to adapt it. 300 hour, 300 hour intense yoga teacher training, forget about it. The 200 hour is already immense. So what did I do? You know what? I'm a mother. I need to teach in a way that is nourishing for me. I split the 300 hours into three modules of 100 hours. 
And each module is specialized in something different. And each module is in balance within itself. Because if I put all the fire practices in one module and then all the lunar practices in another module, it's not going to feel balanced either. You know what I mean? So I used to do it like this before. I used to have my solar modules, my solar acro yoga immersions. Then I used to teach my lunar acro yoga immersions. And then I used to teach, you know, the standing acro, whatever. It doesn't work. It didn't feel healing to me. When I did the solar, I ended up like overexcited. When I did the lunar, I was like a jelly, you know, like the yin expression of somatic. And then there's no consistency in your muscles for like 10 days. You're going to become a blob, right? So your, <laughs> whatever you're specializing in, needs to balance out within your body mind uh, emotion is that clear am i am i uh my coming like this is obviously in like five or ten years but i'm just starting from here because from here we will go back to the beginning and tell you step by step okay so what i what did i do i go so elements and I do traditional Ch yoga meets traditional Chinese medicine. And so you've got your yoga practice and you practice in the morning and then you come to the afternoon and you learn meridians and you learn to specialize in the TCM, the five elements. The second day you practice again and then in the afternoon, too much information, what do we do? Thai yoga massage, osteopathy. Relax, receive, integrate. Every second day, you integrate the experience and you have time to feel rebalanced ah. again. Okay. That's so how elements. Let's go to lucid flow. Do mandala vinyasa, which is, again, fire, beauty, amazing. And then, we go, oh, someone is not muted. I think maybe Christina or someone's on the, without the mute, the spina. Make sure you're muting your microphone, okay? Lucid flow, we're learning how to flow, how to come into a flow state. It's super fluid, super beautiful. And we come into the water. We do spinal waves. We enhance creativity. And you come from sympathetic to parasympathetic. So the key, the true meaning of health is your ability to go from sympathetic to parasympathetic, how, how fast can you go from sympathetic to parasympathetic and vice versa? That's true health. If you can be like, and then like, Dung, there's a gong coming back. Your heartbeat, ba 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 ba. You start exhaling long. You bring your nervous system. You control your prana. You control your breath. You control your heartbeat. Boom! You come back to parasympathetic. How fast? How incredible? How healing? How healing? Because life is gonna throw you all kinds of apples, and some are gonna land in your face. Some are gonna land in your belly. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but you have to like. Okay, now it's time to activate. Now it's time to relax and integrate, rest and digest. So lucid flow, mandala vinyasa, epic, beautiful, deep flows. And then you go into the water and soften and create and draw and make it like, make it yours. Same thing, Vedic and Dharma. We've got the Vedic teachings. We've got the soundscapes. We've got all the spiritual aspect of it. And then we bring it into the physical and into the mentoring coaching like okay from here on what's gonna happen how are you gonna graduate so here i wrote down a little bit of other topics that you can specialize in yin yoga and sound healing yoga nidra mythology which we say we see in lucid flow um kirtan bhakti which i involve in every training self-care yoga 
I have a beautiful friend, Emily, that does self-care trainings, a younger in alignment. I also did ecstatic dance and DJ, right? I learned how to spin because I love music, um, mudras, meditation, or aromatherapy, prenatal, postnatal. I know Binya here does um, yoga for women and womb's work, right? I know a couple of you do amazing, already specialized things that are epic. They're bringing you to a niche, which is what you want. You want to niche. You want to have your own little nugget that nobody else has, that only you offer because it's only uniquely yours. And what ends up happening in my training is that I give like... um yoga and TCM. And so people start using the five element theory in their coaching programs or mandala vinyasa and water, you know, spinal waves. And people start using mythology in their, you know, in their everyday life. So you start kind of applying what you learn into however dharma you're going to use it, like into whatever your purpose is looking like. All right, a couple of pictures here. You'll see some other things that I love to add into a blend. So I would add watsu, um, juices for detoxing and diet, which we did in Soka Elements and Lucid Flow. Every day you have a different juice, a different uh, kind of diet for a different organ. Uh, you'll see me with the tennis balls doing fascia release with the flute doing yin yoga, and then I'm drawing the meridians over someone's back, um, drawing the class into a board. So there's different kind of layers that you, that you will be making uniquely yours, which make up not just the flower of who you are, but of your offerings. Something very interesting, Soha, School of Healing Arts, I envision it like a flower or a tree. It's a living being. And so I see my offerings as every petal being a different topic that brings you into your center. And that's basically what we are. We are mandalas. So either if you do women's work or mentoring and coaching or chef and you involve that in your yoga offerings, they will all support what you're bringing together. So make it uh, make it cool. Whatever you have to share, believe it. Believe in yourself because we need it. If you've got it, then it's because you need to share it. And someone out there wants a part of your cake, wants a piece of your cake. So make it accessible for people to see who you are through your offerings and to, you know, learn and juice it up. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Number three. Have your credentials. What does have your credentials mean? Whatever you're doing, make sure that you're doing it right. Um, do your 200 hour, do your 300 hour. Like if you're sharing yoga, finish your 500 hour, finish your credentials. I did, I cannot explain how many 200 hours and how many 300 hours because I love learning and it doesn't matter if I'm, you know, learning something again, there's always a down dog and the down dog will teach you something different every day. Every time that you go into a down dog, it'll tell you something different. So it's always good to keep coming back to the teachings. Now, with these credentials, when you study, when you receive, you feel confident First of all, embodiment. Make sure that you are embodied. What does that mean? What you teach needs to be well juiced up and embodied. And how do you do that? Believe it or not, 
behind the camera or behind, you know, you putting a video on and seeing your leg. Is my knee straight? Going to a teacher sometimes is not enough unless your teacher is a private coach. Sometimes you need to see yourself in a video to see if you're actually spreading your toes or not. Sometimes you feel your hips are squared and they're totally not. So learn the proper alignment of poses so that you know the structure of the practice. And once you know the structure, you can bend it and you can break it and you can do whatever you do and make it free. But in order to break free, you need to learn properly how to do things. Number two, cueing like a boss. What I mean to say here is NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, happens every day in every story and every conversation. How we speak is so important. Um, the words that you use can be very encouraging or they can make something die. Basically, put a fist against the other fist right? Or place your knuckles together with your other knuckles. Same, same sentence, same actions, completely different vibration. You see that? May every word that comes out of your mouth have intention behind it, have beauty. The way that you speak needs to be harmonizing togetherness and and confidence and safety rather than drop your knee to the ground go ahead and lower your knee rather than don't release your leg into a slingshot what about like release your leg and keep it lifted you know like the words that you use are giving you sensation so be smart with your words when you cue, cue foundation, technique, and experience. If you come to my trainings, you'll learn more about that. Your voice, project a safe teaching voice. Many times when your voice is kind of like a sing-song voice, okay, everyone, we're going to lift the right leg up. It's like, stop. Your voice needs to be um, genuinely who you are. You're not singing, you're not talking to a kindergarten full of um, uh, beautiful kids. You are speaking from your heart. So when you share, you need to share with who you are, with this voice, with, with you having a conversation with someone. Like it needs to feel real. So that's the voice that makes me feel safe because I know that you are being you. Right. And when you're genuine, there's nothing that will beat that when you are honest. Develop intelligent sequencing and flow. This also takes credentials to have. Building progressive and safe sequences is important and involving breath. And what I would really suggest here is choosing a speed that is safe. Many people coming from Ashtanga Vinyasa, Power Vinyasa, they teach fast sequences. It's not worth it. The body doesn't like fast. You can do different velocities for different intentions once you warm up. So the slower you start, the more the body will trust you. Assist and adjust properly. This I would say Sometimes people don't like to touch and sometimes people don't like to be touched either. But what really matters is that you're paying attention. If you are teaching a class and you're walking around the space, walking around the space is not enough. You need to walk around the space and look and see what's happening. And if someone's actually having a hard time with the right wrist, you notice the right wrist. If someone is sinking into the chaturanga so fast, you notice that someone's sinking in it. And the next round, you come and help. So that's paying attention. This can be tricky.
because sometimes you're concentrated in your own sequence and in your own teaching. So you kind of forget to be there for others, but make space to actually pay attention to people because that's what all people actually truly want and what why they're there is to feel that connection. And when you're present with them, there's deeply, you know, they're gonna they're gonna feel safe with you. And last but not least, enjoy what you teach. Enjoy teaching. If you're not enjoying it, you need to change something. Maybe you need less classes a week. Maybe you need to change the topic of your class. Whatever you do, you need to enjoy what you're teaching. And if you're not enjoying it, change up the sequence, put your best music on and forget about the class and build something that you will actually enjoy. Because if you're not enjoying it, nobody will. <laughs> or they will, but it's not coming from a genuine place. So I want to write, I want you to write in a piece of paper which of these you need to improve. Just take a little note because we all have them, okay? We all have all of them. Which ones do you need to improve? Is my embodiment needing to improve? Is my voice coming out genuinely? Is me paying attention to students actually there? Am I enjoying when I'm teaching? So write down which one needs a little love. Or maybe make my note and say, okay, this one. All right. I want some of you to share this. So how about putting it in the chat? Write down in the chat. There, this way it can be interactive. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> How's that? That's better. Okay. I'm going to put these guys down here. All of them on the time, says Sheen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Give me something, people. Sequencing, says Kylie. Okay. Sequencing, if you want to learn more sequencing, um, that's what I teach in Lucid Flow. Binya, I need to put some love to adjusting my students, especially when boys can look so different. When boys. No, I meant bodies. <laughs> oh, I'm like, wait. <laughs> no, I feel like sometimes bodies look so different and it gives me a hard time to touch. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And not everyone is comfortable with touch. You need to like kind of smell before you actually come in, you need to know if they want to be adjusted. And you and this needs to be perceived. Kylie, paying attention, not getting too caught up in the doing. Exactly. Because in the end, they don't care really. They won't know about the sequence if you mess it up. But they will notice if you're paying attention to them. That's what, what changes everything. Alice is also saying hands-on assisting, more attention to the words. Yep the neuro-linguistic programming and the hands-on for sure, which can also be non-verbal, but we also see some of that in Vaidika Dharma and how to actually touch. And um, Thai yoga massage classes will also help you be more confident with um, touch. Joanna says, I think I reached the point in which I teach so much then I'm not even enjoying the classes anymore. Oh my God, Joanna, that happened to me so many times. I was teaching like 24 classes a week. Why? Why do we do we even do it? Like, no, 
instead of teaching so many classes, you'll earn the same amount of money creating the workshops. I'll, I'll teach you how. Um, Shani, timing always end after after the time. Yeah. You know you're stealing time to people when you when you end late. You're actually stealing <laughs> from people's agendas. And yeah, Shani. So definitely time. Joanna. So this is a good wake up call. <laughs> Anna, after too much online classes, it's hard to be back to offline assisting, adjusting. I totally get that. I, I actually had that happen to me after COVID. I had to come back to touching. Um, Yeah, come do some Thai yoga massage. It will really help you. And so has Starlight online. Um, We'll teach you also how to touch. Shani always takes 10 more minutes. <laughs> yep. I know. Make your classes longer, Shani. You know, teach teach longer classes. Kylie, it just can be tricky as well. Timing this in the class when I'm concentrating on the sequencing. Yeah. Yes. I totally get that. You, We need to make room and space for adjusting. Um, Despina, I need to go to the next level and teach less classes. I'm a very new teaching, still learning a lot. Okay. I'm going to teach you how to go to the next level. Let's go together. Thank you all for your answers. This really helps because it makes it interactive. And then I can see what you're actually needing. Okay, number three. So number one, purpose, right? Number two, specialize. Number three, have your credentials in order. Number four, have a mentor a teacher, a coach, a guide. Okay, I've had Swamiji for the past 15 years. I go and learn classes from him every week. Every week I do my Saskritam classes. I do my chanting classes, my Vedic teaching classes. It's important to keep your values alive. So bef before we go into the business of things, I'm just going to finish with, you know, these two other points that are very important. Have a mentor, have a teacher, have a guide. If you don't have a teacher, if you don't have a mentor, like a 15-year-old Swamiji, whatever, there's other ways that you can do this, okay? First of all, always try and have at least two teachers that you're learning from, one or two. Um. Sometimes you're in between transition because you're changing styles, you're learning from other people. That's totally fine. Pick, choose three, three yogis, okay? Three people that do what you want to do, that you aspire, that you admire, and that you want to bring some of their qualities into your life. If you don't have a teacher yet, I suggest definitely finding a teacher that tunes into your needs and consistency is key and and learning from the teacher reading the books doing the work and not just that have at least three people that you admire so even write it down in a notebook who are people that you actually want to be more like in your business in your career in your the way that you share and just have inspiration coming through. Like have these be your kind of mentors where you see, you know, what they're sharing. You see how they love from the heart. You see how they show up for their family. Whatever you like about them. But have at least three people that you look up to. So this is besides having a teacher and a guide and a coach. Is you, you, you know, you always want to be inspired always keep yourself inspired and this is by having people that know more that have been there for more years than you that you can actually learn something from so that's these are my teachers you'll see here swami dayananda ji who is the teacher of swamiji vahishananda saraswati in red that's my main teacher is uh, photo number two i i 
learn with him every week. Then I have Radhaji, where I'm with my hands. I'm so much younger. She's uh, also a devotee of Dayanandaji and beautiful teachings coming also from a psychological perspective. And on the right side, you'll see um, Mayra Kalingo, my Mexican teacher who did uh, Mandala Vinyasa. She registered Mandala Vinyasa, and I always honor and mention my teachers. So have your teachers, have your people that you admire. And number five, have a team. Build a community. Cultivate it and water it like a plant. Have people that are close to you, people that love your classes, people who enjoy what you're teaching. Have them near you just helping you becoming your assistant you know give them abundance bring prosperity into their lives and even if you don't have an assistant in the beginning um write down who would be your perfect your perfect assistant who would be your perfect assistant in this moment and once you write that down, even if he or she doesn't become your perfect assistant, you're already telling the universe, hey, knock, knock, I need an assistant. Maybe not now, but I'm going to need an assistant pretty soon. So universe is always listening, especially if we're writing things down and we're thinking about them. The more you think about it, the more it'll come. So you'll see here Samara, she comes to all my trainings. She's my nutritionist. You'll see Wadi who does all our pictures and the videos and photos and everything. Rafa with me on the drums and the music. Lizzie, she's a SOHA ambassador teaching SOHA trainings in Mexico. And Cheryl, a beautiful assistant here in Bali. Cultivate your people, give them more. Remember, everything is about how much we give, how much we love, and how much we serve. And one last thing before we get into the grid of business, okay? Number six, guess what? Yeah. Over deliver. Whatever you do, give more because you've got more. <laughs> if you've got some, You've got more. We say something in Mexico. If one person can eat, three person can three people can sit on the table and share. Over deliver is meaning give more than what people are paying. And that's something that will make it make you make people trust you because you are the reckless giver, like Shiva. Shiva is the reckless giver. So the infinite giver, the Lakshmi, you are Lakshmi, you become Lakshmi, you give Lakshmi, and through Lakshmi, Lakshmi prevails. And, and Lakshmi is receiving like lots of coins in one hand, but then she's got another hand and she's like, she's giving. <laughs> so there's she's like a bottomless, bottle of abundance that's what you want to be the more you let go of abundance and share it the more abundance will come to you because you you are in that natural cycle of of giving and receiving the more you the more you give the more you receive this is how it works and so by over delivering how do i do this well for example you build events you build retreats, uh, you build you build things that um, that give people more than what they're paying. So what I do is I am very present. I feel what the room needs, for example, in a in a class. I don't just move around the space. I pay attention. I sense the field. I see movement. I smell. I listen. I see what you need, right? So I'm just your presence is your greatest gift. 
you being present is the greatest gift that you can give someone. And don't just give me a class. Give me a master class. Give me a webinar. Give me a workshop. Um, give me a yoga and hiking, you know, weekend. Create something that is fun, that has to do with something that people like. For example, you live in Switzerland. Take me hiking, right? So I went to Switzerland this last summer and I shared yoga and it was great. But then the next day I did yoga and hiking and it was full. My class was the first time in Switzerland. I had maybe 15 people. But when I did yoga and hiking, I had 30 people, right? So make something fun that people like in relation to the season. It was summer. People like it sunny. People like hiking. Take them out, right? There's a wine tasting, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yoga and wine tasting catering at the end. This uh, is you to, um, at the live Zoom meeting. Yeah. Oh, lost it. Okay. <laughs> Let me mute everyone. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is how we over deliver is think about what people need wherever you are. What do people need? And how can I give them more than what they're paying for? In class, another thing that I love doing is being an epic DJ. Put the best music that you've got and actually take the time to build an epic playlist. And you can even spin if you like, you know. I, for example, I put a playlist, I theme my classes, I make them awesome, which, by the way, if, you, if you're in this webinar, you will receive my most popular theming classes as a gift, and that's coming at the end. But anyway, you make the playlist and then I come to Shavasana and I sing them live music because I love music. And this is something that I've got. But maybe you like aromatherapy. Maybe you like, you know, womb belly massage or something. And just tell them like, we're going to do yoga and then there's belly massage at the end. Or, you know, like, Make something that's uniquely yours that nothing and no one else shares. Or they do share, but the way you share it is different. I put reverb. I, I plug the microphones. Like I bought microphones and then I put like an echo and then I build like a spaceship and a soundscape because I love playing with sounds. But, you know, whatever you love doing, give them more. Give them opposed benefits. Talk about meridians. Talk about chakras. Talk about mythology. Give me the benefits of why this class is going to make me a better person. Give people value. People are looking for value. They're looking for things that will help them do something. They will solve one of their problems. So solve people's problems. Help solve people's problems. Okay. This is over deliver. Does anyone have any questions until now? Because we're going to the last one, which is my absolute favorite. Okay, everyone's good. I can't see many of you. I would love to see you if you can put your camera, even if you're in pajamas. <laughs> All right, here we go, bonus. Be a business person. I'm going to tell you how to do it. Hi, Els. Thank you. <laughs> I love looking at faces because then I can see, you know, can see your reactions as well. All right. So far, so good. This is where the jackpot is. Okay. This slide is going to tell you everything you need to know. First thing first, write down your three inspirational yogis, which I already, you know, said. I'd love to get the recording. Yeah, for sure. Everyone's getting the recording. For sure. Um, number one, 
Are you gathering the emails? Are you gathering emails? How many of you are gathering emails? Let me know. Make a sign. Are you gathering? Give me an emoji if you're gathering emails. Let me see emojis. I was like, no, no. Yes or no? No, nobody's gathering emails. Is there anyone? Okay, Tanya's gathering emails. Despina, Binia, yes. I want to see who's gathering. This is like one of the most important things. There's two Sheen. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. The two best ways to sell things, to sell programs. Number one, I'm going to say it. Many of you are not going to like it. Instagram. <laughs> Number one is social media. Okay. That's going to give you exposure. That's going to give you a branding name. And that's going to give you presence out there. It doesn't have to be Instagram. It could be like Tanya would say, YouTube, right? She knows it because she's got the oh, most yeah. epic YouTube channel. Okay, yeah. someone's not muted. Yasmin, I think that's you. Okay, I muted you. The, the best way to share your programs is through the internet. If it's YouTube or social media, okay, Yasmin, I got you. Um, it could be Instagram, it could be Facebook, YouTube. You pick your platform. Just make yourself known out there so that people can reach you. Because many times I'm looking for you and I can't find you. And I want to find you, but I can't. And I click into Google and I click into... That's why YouTube is really, really powerful as well. Because you actually say... Ganesha mythology. And you'll say, oh, Daniela Mandela Soha, Ganesha mythology. Maybe I'm there, but maybe not because I'm not so popular. So you need to click a lot. But anyway, if someone writes down the topic of your thing, they're going to find you. And that's the best way to sell is connecting with people. People see who, what you have to share. And when they see what you have to share, then they'll follow you and they'll want to keep learning. So social media. And number two, the other way of selling your programs is actually with your email list. Because from the emails, I can get to your inbox and say, hey, guess what? Lucid Flow Early Bird finishes in 24 hours. For example... I'm building this webinar because my early bird of lucid flow finishes in two days. And what did I want to do? I want to make some noise. I want people to make some noise. What's going on in her Instagram? She's giving a live webinar. Oh my God, it's free. Oh my God. And in the webinar, I tell you, hey, look at this. This is what I share. You like it? Because maybe you do and you couldn't find me, but now you can and if you found me and you like it, you can come. But if you wanted it and you didn't, nobody told you it was there, how can you come, right? So you gotta make some noise so people can find you. And this is what takes me to the other one, which is, well, how do I build an email list? Make a lead magnet. This is my lead magnet. What's a lead magnet? Do you guys know what that is? Does anyone know what a lead magnet is? This is your business coaching one-on-one. -on -one. Lead magnet is something that is going to give you leads. And leads is emails, basically. So, hey, here's my free class on Fascia. To, to get my download of my free Fascia class, put your email here. And so you go, Binia Cosner, da 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 and you put your email and then ding dong, flash a class comes into your inbox. You become, that's a lead magnet. This is a magnet. It's a freebie that you're offering, a free webinar, a free class where people put their emails and then voila, you're in their newsletter. 
Now, something important about emails. You can't just send, hey, this is my training here. This is my training there. We're not there to sell. Remember, this is serving, loving, and sharing value. If you do have someone's email, take care of the email. Pay attention to the email. Don't just treat it like a money thing. These are the people that are with you. It's your community. It's your tribe. It's your family. What do I want, Danny? When I subscribe to someone's newsletter, I want value. I want you to give me information that I'm looking for that helps me, that serves me, and that makes me feel love. So what would I want to receive? I would love receiving astrology facts. I would love receiving songs for Shavasana, song ideas, programs. Uh, I would love receiving webinars. What I would love receiving, guess what, is what I give. <laughs> it's that beautiful. It's that beautiful. Because if someone could give it to me, I would love that. And that's, that's why I enjoy doing what I do, because I would love to receive this from someone. So you know what? Let me give it. Let me give it to you. Let me sing you a song for Navaratri, and I send it to you in the newsletter. So you come into my newsletter, and you will receive value. You receive love, because I love doing it. I, I love sharing music. So... Once you gather your emails, what do you want to share with your community that you love or that you would love to receive? Another way to gather emails is having a QR code. I actually have one. Let me show it to you. I have it right here. This is actually my old one. And this is my new one. Okay. Okay. I have this poster at the end of class. Experience your true self, so hot, my QR code. So every time I finish a class, I say, hey, if you wanna join my newsletter and know about my upcoming events, join my newsletter and I've got the QR code and you'll guess what? Free class. This is my freebie, that's my lead magnet. You'll receive an online free class. Oh, I want a free class because I came to Bali three days, but I'm leaving and I still want to learn from you. Click. Now they're on your newsletter. Make sense? Everyone on board? Okay. <laughs> All right. Make your copy is your next one. You're the best seller because you know what you offer. So make sure that whatever you're selling, it's coming first from your heart rather than hiring someone to sell for you. Do your own marketing. And in order to do your own marketing, number one, you need great pictures. Okay, don't give me horrible, low quality, blah, blah. It's 7 p.m., there's no light and I'm giving you a photo. No, no, no. Go find an awesome photographer dress up and take some awesome photos and put them in your website and you want to share you know embodying your most radiant self because that's what you want to offer so dress properly bring good quality in your pictures and do your own marketing I go out, I teach a class, and I tell my friends, come do yoga. It's going to be good for you. Hey, come do what's going to make you feel better. Stretch your muscles, pump up your blood, circulate your systems, move your fascia. Come do some yoga. Believe in what you're offering because you are making life better for people. And the more you enjoy it, the more you believe it. And the more you believe it, you'll feel confident to say, hey, my cousin's in town. Come do practice. Come do yoga. But sometimes you're like self-confident. Yeah, I've got some classes here. No, like believe that what you're sharing is making because it is. You are changing people's lives, you know, especially if you're 
researching and the most, you know, uh, recent health science facts, you're going to help someone. So sell your own classes, go to well-established studios, maybe go to hotels, things that pay you more, and tell me a story. Connect with me. Tell me your truth. Be you and tell me what you've been through. And me learning what you've been through is going to make me know that you're human. People want to feel that you're human. You don't want to be a goddess or in a pedestal. Well, we are goddesses, actually. We are gods and goddesses. But we don't want to feel like we're the goddess. We're all god and goddess. So you want to feel also your human side and say, hey, I've been through this. And I actually learned a little bit from it. And let me share it from my heart. So tell people a story, be truthful, be real. And, and from that, I'm going to continue. Whatever you earn from what you're giving, invest it back into your own work. I invest at least 20% of what I earn back into Soha. I invest actually even more. I would say even 30 because I, I don't, I love Soha. Soha is like my baby. So the more you invest on your project, it'll blossom. And, and something that I really recommend is that you do your branding. If you don't have branding yet, and you want to really be a yoga professional, like if you want to earn money from yoga, you need to A, build a logo make a name if it's your personal name or a company pick three or five colors that you love and two fonts and keep consistency you keep your logo you keep your colors and you keep your two fonts through every poster every flyer and everything and this builds trust because i know that you're consistent and the image is pleasing to my eyes because your branding is set. Believe it or not, it's art. It's beauty. So if I receive beauty through my eyes, because you're paying attention, not just to your physical and health, but you're also paying attention on how you express your project and you're artistic in the way that you offer it, then it makes me feel that I can trust your business because it's you're paying attention to it. You're present with it. You're not just hiring people to do stuff. Your soul and heart is in it. So, so that's, you need to treat your company as a spirit. Soha is a spirit, is a being, is a living being. And I place Soha in my altar. And I ask the flower of Soha what it wants to bring. And I allow things and branches to fall off. And I allow branches to come in like a tree. She's a living entity. And I'm just here to channel and, and receive and, and blossom the, the divine intervention. But I'm just an empty vessel. It's not mine. It's something that's being channeled through my vessel. So treat your business as an entity in itself that is channeling through you because that's what it is. It's universe speaking through your heart because you're loving and because you're serving. So universe is going to weave in and through your heart. You, you actually don't need to do much. You just need to allow the sacred symbiosis to reciprocity with divine, you know, information to flow through you and then bring it from your heart forth and the earth. So that's how I'm going to finish. Last but not least, um, have a platform that supports you. I use Kajabi. I love Kajabi. It's my favorite platform, especially if you're a teacher and you've got courses that you want to do online. 
it's not cheap, but it's the best I've found. And it's got emails and it's got landing pages, lead magnets. It's got everything. Um, and for you to be a coach, a mentor, you know, men, uh, memberships. So if you do want Kajabi, let me know, because if you use my link, then commission comes to me. And then when you have Kajabi and you give someone else the link, then commission goes to you. I don't dedicate myself to sell Kajabi, and I, but I truly love it. That's why I share it is because I love the platform. I've never, yeah, you know, it's, it's there, but it's not what I do. Okay. Now, before we go into questions and answers, was this helpful? Has this been helpful? Give me a thumbs up. Say yes in the chat. Yes. Right. Things that have been helpful for you. I want to know what you are, you know, what's been helpful. Yes. I see thumbs up. I see claps. I have to go. Kylie, yes. Go feed your people. Before everyone goes, um, I'll share something that you might like. And these are my programs, which is why I did this webinar. So I'm just going to let you know what are my upcoming programs. And then we come into questions and answers. So I've got Lucid Flow coming up in February you at the first week of February and the early bird is finishing in two days. So this is part of that is making some noise. So, you know, and guess what? I'm giving all of you a coupon because you're in my webinar um, of 108, which is the coupon that I give to my tribe and my family and all the students that are part of SOHA. So have that coupon in mind and lucid flow is a training that teaches you how to teach mandala vinyasa okay it specializes you on teaching something that almost nobody teaches there's only two of us teaching mandala vinyasa trainings in the world so it's pretty epic to offer something that's unique and it's also giving you the latest research on health and science the movement patterns and anatomy We've got breath and daily meditations, and we go into the water. We do the spinal waves. We heal inside the water. And from this, creativity comes up, and you create your own designs. So it's also very mythological. We go through each of the gods and goddesses. We chant their mantras. We unfold pronunciation and meaning. It's really deep. And it's also super flowy and yummy. And then we have um, in May, uh, 200 hours. So if you've done it already, know that you can sell any of my programs and just let me know and I'll give you an affiliate link if you have a student or a friend and we will share some Lakshmi, some commission for anyone and everyone who wants to recommend a student I'm happy to always offer commissions to people that support us. And then in October, we have Soha Elements, where yoga meets traditional Chinese medicine. And that one is more on the healing arts. It's completely nourishing to the soul. It brings you back to balance. And it gives you a framework that will be your medicine for the rest of your life. Okay, if you have any questions, now we've got some time to answer them. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I want to know, I want to know what you take from this webinar, bring it into the chat. And if you have a question, please, this is the time. Joanna, thank you so much. Yes, thank you for being here. I'm here to listen to all of your things. I will send the recording for anyone that was here and came in late or whatever. Um, and I also send a sheet with the most beautiful themes. I hope to come to Bali for Vaidika Dharma. 
Vaidika is coming soon. Thank you, Sheen. I love you, Sheen. It's always so good to see your face. Angelique, this was great. But I actually want to hear you. What are your, you know, what are your obstacles at the moment? Because I can help you out. Like, I've got so much information. We've got a couple of more minutes. I'm happy to help you out. Don't be shy. Just throw it. Even if you say, like, oh, I don't know if I should ask this. Just throw it in. I'm sure I have something to say. Thank you, Danny. It was a great webinar. Tell me what you're having, you know, problems with, and I'm happy to help you solve them. <laughs> Angelique, does your newsletter always link to your website? How do you link the different platforms, Instagram, et cetera? Okay. Does my newsletter always link to my website? Definitely yes. In every uh, email, you'll have not just my website. You'll also have my Instagram. Oh, my God, there's a cat. Hi, kitty, kitty, cat. <laughs> Qué hermosa. I love cats. Every newsletter... Every email has a button, has a link to my Instagram, link to my Facebook, my website. And then in my Instagram, there's always a link in bio. So you go to link in bio and I have a link tree account. Link tree account is super helpful because it'll give all of your clients or all of your friends a way to send them to your website, send them to your workshop in hiking yoga, send them to your woman wellness for Binya, send them to your latest podcast. So you can have like five or 10 or 15 links that people uh, can click on your Instagram that will take them to your website. So definitely add your website in every um, email. How do you link your different platforms? Yes. Camille, will you have one more Lucid Flow this year? No, we have one Lucid Flow per year. We might have Vaidika Dharma. We do have Lucid Flow and Elements. I might throw in a Vaidika Dharma because there's lots of people that want it. Um, but otherwise, you can find it online, Camille, the Vaidika Dharma, or wait until next year and there'll be definitely another lucid flow kylie what to do first business-wise example website marketing etc that's a very good question what to do first you definitely need a website you need someone somewhere people can find you and buy your programs so if that's maybe not a website and maybe it's a landing page, that's okay. They just need a place where they can click and pay or click and view information. Because if you don't have that, then you can do all the marketing you've got, but then no one's going to buy anything and no one's going to see where the information is. So you definitely need first a place where you're going to place all the information. If that's a landing page or a website or even, you know, a YouTube channel, uh, not a YouTube channel, but like, a, yeah, it's got to be a landing page or a website. And hopefully that website can have a button for them to see information of your next uh, workshop and click and, and pay. Now, this is what I recommend. Many of you are teaching just normal classes. You need to start teaching maybe a little bit less classes and start teaching more workshops. See if you can see, you know, every full moon, build a workshop. Full moons are great because they, they give you a lot of exposure. Rather than new moons, new moon, you shouldn't do anything. But the next day from new moon, like one day after, which was maybe yesterday, boom, you start. Great. Perfect time to start is when the moon is crescent 
perfect way to do a webinar or to do a marketing is in the full moon because there's more light. There's more exposure. Peak, there's more movement. The energy is out there. So definitely have a place. Um, build programs masterclass. Start with a two-hour masterclass or a little workshop on womb wellness, you know, yoga for moms. And have a place where they can click and pay. I use Kajabi. Please, if anybody wants Kajabi, wants to see Kajabi, actually, let me just give you the link because I know that you will, you can see the link and from there, get to learn the platform, you know, get to see what the platform can give you. Here it is. I'm going to write the link in the chat. And then you can actually go and see it for yourself. It's epic. There it is. Okay. Kylie, I hope that was clear. Despina, I own a studio, so I still teach many hours. So I don't have free time for tra traveling and retreats trying to find the way to teach less. Yes. I think you're in Greece, Despina, um, right? Filaraki? Yeah, Filaraki. I'm in Greece, no. No, Filaraki. Okay. I love you. <laughs> of course. If you teach too many hours, I used to do that before, and you're going to burn yourself out, and then you're not going to enjoy it so much. So I still you, enjoy, but... <laughs> yeah. You need to start hiring other uh, teachers, and sometimes it's hard to let go because I, for example, I was such a perfectionist that I was like, hmm... This teacher is not going to teach what I want them to teach them. And then blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you need to let that go and hire teachers that will have their own gifts and, and start maybe with one other teacher. And you can build maybe one workshop a month. And that will give you, it'll get you through taking at least two or three classes out of your weeks. So um, definitely start changing the way that like work less, earn more. Once you've already taught so many yoga classes, you need to start building events. And even if it's that like yoga and hiking or yoga and lake, go to a lake in Greece, you know, you take them to a yoga and then you do brunch and you take them to a lake. And then those little events will make it a lot more sustainable for you to teach less classes and do more. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Then you'll have more time to travel. Melissa, planning to do a year of travel. Mm -hmm. Any advice for teaching while traveling? Yeah. Where are you traveling? Because you can teach wherever you are. The amazing thing about yoga is that you can work anywhere you can do online classes and let's say let's say this is one of my students and I'm going to share what one of my students did she did so elements so she did the five element theory and she said well I need to keep working she organized a five master class program online where she was going to do one class for the water, one class for the metal, earth, fire, and wood. And so she did one master class per element online whilst she was here assisting me because she'd done the Soha elements. And then she had students from her studio or from her, you know, community click into her five master classes as package or as a drop in. And so you can do classes online or wherever you're traveling to, Malisha. You connect to someone, you go to Facebook. Hey, I'm coming over. I've got yoga and womb wellness. 
like Binya to offer. You talk to studios, you know, you talk to friends, you build. The first time I went to Barcelona, my Barcelona yoga conference, I had 20 students in my class. The second time, well, I had maybe 15. The second time I had 24. The third time, guess what? I had around 70. Last year, I had 300 and something students in my yoga conference class because it's my seventh year. So the first year is going to be probably an investment. But if you go and you connect with the studio, you connect and you tell them you're a yoga teacher, you'll maybe build a class of five. But if you go the next year, you'll maybe have a class of 10. And if you keep going, it's going to build. So don't just like, oh, I'm going to do a world tour. No, do a world tour and be consistent. I always go to Barcelona. I always go to, you know, Switzerland. I pass through here, here, and here. And maybe somebody else invites me. Maybe I've got an invitation from, you know, I've got an invitation from Greece. I've got another one in Ibiza that's waiting for me. I can't do them all at the same. But every year I consistently go back to the places that I was. I travel once a year, every summer, and people know. And if you can do it around the same day, it's even better. And so you build from there. Does that make sense, Malisha? Yeah. Okay. Mariana, thanks for the advice. It's definitely would try to make a video of myself. Do you have some scheduled classes in February in Bali? Yes. Are you in Bali? Yay. Come Tuesday to La Tribu and Wednesdays to Alchemy Yoga Center. I teach twice a week. That's all I teach. I love teaching and that's why I teach only twice a week. I don't need to teach, but I do it because I love it. So eventually you will get there. Eventually you're going to teach one class a week because you still want to teach, you know, and that's the objective. Um, so Tuesday, let's see, come, come, Mariana. I would love to meet you. <laughs> I'd love to come to October in Elements. Laura Stella. You see? That's awesome. Laura, this is exactly why this webinar works. You see how it works? This, what I just did today, is maybe you didn't know me before. But now you know what I offer. And when you do a webinar, people will know what you offer. And then people will say, yeah, I want to do what you're offering. You know, sometimes we're so like worried about our offerings, but actually people are looking for you. So we got to reach out like trees and say, hey, I'm here. So we'd love to have you, Laura, come in in October. Sheen, it's almost midnight in Hawaii and I have to say goodnight. Good night, Sheen. I love you. So have family. Back to Bali. Dani. Yes. Everybody's chatting, but I'm just going to go talking. Go for it. <laughs> Thank you for this presentation. I wanted to ask you more about finding a niche that changes and how that changes. So, for example, my YouTube channel got very popular because of back pain videos. And my main clientele and online selling is back pain, but I don't want to teach that anymore. It's not interesting to me anymore. So my question to you is how does one um, shift or find a new niche? Like what is your, yeah, just your thoughts about that. What did you, what did you say? And once I remember you saying that calm people should be teaching something more powerful and like very energetic people should be teaching um, the opposite to balance. Yeah, so this somehow stayed with me. Yeah, thank you. I'm just looking for your comments. Yeah, thank you, Tanya. I love, I love that. You know what? I'm super active and I used to teach in this super epic gym, like, yeah, we got this. And then I would come back home and I would be so angry and such a 
a-hole like I was just because <laughs> I had too much fire and I was making me go crazy keeping myself out of balance so I learned how to balance my offerings I understand about the niche and you know what always works for me you make a YouTube video and see make maybe three or four of things that you like and see which one gets more response. The people will tell you what they're looking for. For example, I'll make a reel of my yoga flow. I'll make a reel of me sharing some music. I'll make a reel of me sharing like meridians. And the most popular one will tell me what people actually want. It's the same in YouTube. I made a webinar on, you know, like mythology. I made a webinar on business. Yoga is a profession. You know how many students I have in this webinar? Around 200. L like whatever people are asking for, that it will be clear. It's the same like when I when I like post a song like people love connecting. So people will respond better to things that you, you know, that you share and then they, and then you will know what they want. This webinar I did last year and it was so successful that I decided to do it again because there's so many yoga teachers out there that don't know how to create a, a successful career. And I've done it and I know how to do it and I love doing it because it's what brings me prosperity and it's what feeds my seven-year-old. So I'm like, wait, I have a lot of knowledge on this theme. Let me share it. I never thought I was going to share yoga and business of yoga. Never. But you know what? People need it. People need some extra confidence. And so just like lower back pain, there's something that you will share that people are going to respond well to. And sometimes it's a story. And in the story, you build a poll and you say, what would you like to learn more about? You know, knee pain or, you know, chef detoxing or blah and ABC. And you make a poll and people will respond to your story and they'll tell you what they need. Does that make sense? Yeah. And another thing that I did is I sent a newsletter. I sent an email and I said, hey, Share me what's your 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 most recurrent uh, obstacle. And and people responded to the email. And from the responses, I've I've built some of the online courses, believe it or not. Like sequencing. And I said, hey, people need to know how to sequence. And I built lucid flow. Mythology. I really want to learn the myths. Okay, lucid flow. Let's go. People really know, like want to know. And, and so what they ask for and you have, give it. Mm -hmm. This Bina, do you teach a training during the summer? Yes, I do. I teach uh, in July. I'm going to Europe in the summer. So I will teach in a Sun Sun Gathering Festival. I think it's in... Uh, in the north of Spain. And then I'll teach a training in Barcelona. The From the 1st to the 7th, I will teach Soha Elements 50 hour in Barcelona. So that's going to be half of the 100 hour, but it's still super awesome. Um, June, July. And then in August, I'm going to teach a 50 hour Lucid Flow in Mexico. Can you, can, you, can you please repeat the dates about the Barcelona training? One to seven. First to July, seven. It's actually one to six. Barcelona Home Insti Institute. It's already in my uh, in my website. I will take it. Okay. Uh, but I'm sharing it here in the in the group chat. There it is. 
That's a first year. Uh, okay, Ohm Institute. Okay. There it is. This is Mireya's place. No, this is Sochi's place. Mireya ah. is Om Shanti. Om Shanti, yeah, okay. One day I'll go to Mireya's. One day in Greece also. One day in Greece, of course. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have any other questions? Else, Tita, Zoe, I'm here. We have one more question and then we can have a little prayer to say goodbye. I'm so thankful for everyone to be here. Is everyone settled? Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing this now so I can see you all. Yay. All right, let's close with a little prayer. Super happy. Thank you. I really, really wish that you can apply any of and anything that you received. Sleep with it. Bleed on it. Just feel into it and... I'm here if you have any questions. I wish to see you again and have your class. Yes, Camille. Okay, I'm going to sing a little prayer to finish up. So let's come up to seated. Take a big exhale and soften the belly. And open the heart. Hmm. And just hold some gratitude for everything that we shared today. Opening the crown, also saying thank you to all your personal guides for bringing you here to this session today where we can share and learn from each other. I'll sing the mantra. We can just receive. Om Swasti Prajabhya Paripalayantam Nyajena Margena Mahi Mahisha Go Brahma Nipya Shvamastunityam Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Kale Varshatu Parjanyaha Prithvi Sasya Shalini Desho yam kshu marahitaha Brahmana santu nirvayaha Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham purnam bhavatu Sarvesham mangalam bhavatu Sarve bhavantu sukinaha Sarve santu nirabhayaha Sarve bhatra nipashyantu, maka shittu kabak bhave, asatho ma sat kamaya, tamaso ma jyotir kamaya, mrityur ma mritam kamaya, om pur namada pur namidam, pur nat pur namudachyate, Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om Beautiful Swasti Mantra in every heartbeat or full beauty, prosperity, abundance, happiness, freedom to every being. Bring your palms up to the heavens. Into your heart, down to the earth. Thank you so much. Yay! Thank you, everyone. <laughs> the webinar will be sent definitely for sure. 
Thank you so much. We'll send the recordings and we'll send some extra gifts. Extra coupons also will be waiting in your newsletter so you can join any and all trainings with me here in Bali or in Europe for the summer. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>